So in today's webinar, we are talking about pledges, grants, and matching donations. Um, so, uh, if so, we might be talking a little bit. So some of what we're going to be covering today is going to be familiar from regular donations. Um, so things like the solicited by fields and soft credit campaigns, donate uh, campaigns, programs, things like that. Um, so some of that's going to be familiar. Um, but specifically, what we're going to talk about is creating uh, pledge profiles, grant profiles, and matching profiles, and how to work with all three of those. Um, so let's start with pledges. Um, so first item on the outline. So to start a, <clears throat> to start a pledge, um, and before we can even enter payment for a pledge, we have to create a pledge profile. So we do this, you know, we just start by going to anyone's, any old person's record, depending on you know, whoever is making the pledge. Um, so I apologize for any sluggishness with so many people on it. it tends to slow my computer down. Um, but one thing I want to start with also is the difference between a recurring donation and a pledge. So um, pledge, hold on one second. Um, okay. A pledge is when someone promises to pay a certain amount of money by a certain date. So usually something like, I promise to pay you $1,000 by this time next year. Um, they may or they may not make an installment plan. That's you know independent. Um, but a recurring donation is when they, they make it more like, I'm going to pay you a fixed amount each month for a certain time frame. So basically a pledge is a promise. They're going to give you some finite amount of cash within a finite amount of period, with a finite period, but it's, it's a promise. They aren't actually automating it necessarily, though they might, and that's where things get hazy. Um, but a recurring donation is they've actually automated it. So either they've gone online and set it up there, maybe they're sent, having their bank send you a check each month. But basically, you know, the keywords here are X amount per something, per month, per, per year, per, per whatever. Well, a pledge is X amount by some date. So if, if, if you're ever wondering, is this a recurring, is this a pledge, that's kind of something to help give you a little bit of guidance. Um, so today for pledges, let's go to, to, to Abby Normal. No, let's use someone I haven't done a, let's use Adam, Adam B. Ross. I don't believe he has a recurring profile. He has a lot of duplicates in there. I do. This is our demo database is pretty messy. Um, we we tend to do all sorts of crazy stuff to it, weird names and duplicates and bizarre data. So <clears throat> this is not a good example of a tidy database. Um, there are a lot of examples of things not to do in this database. But for the time being, let's go ahead and add a pledge. So we can go ahead and start from the contact details page, um, and we're going to come down to pledge details. You can also do it from the edit screen, which I'll show you later, um, but I like doing it from here. So we're going to create a new pledge profile. So pledge details, we click on add, and it's going to bring up the add edit pledge screen. And this is where we start putting in the details about our pledge. The first thing is how much are they pledging? So this is, you know, what is the total pledge going to be? So if they are doing installments, what would all the installments come up to be? So in this case, let's say he's donating $5,000. All right, so next we talk about the time frame. When did he make the pledge? And when and how, you know, when is it to be fulfilled? So, you know, let's say he made this pledge this last weekend. So he made it on the 1st. So that's the start date. And then the end date's gonna be calculated for us based on our time frame. So basically, this is gonna start tying into installments. So if we don't know what kind of, you know, they're just going to pay us when they pay us, we might do it's a one payment within a year. So they're going to pay us within one year. Or we might decide, well, you know, we know they're going to pay us over the course of that year in monthly installments. So we can do it's over the time frame of 12 months. And so what this will do is just with one year, it's one payment. If it's installments, we know it's going to be paid in installments, we're going to do it as 12 months or maybe four quarters or 52 weeks or, you know, however they're going to do it. If we know it's going to be somewhat erratic, then we can kind of take our best guess. We know they're probably going to pay us roughly every month, so you might just do a 12 month. If you know that they're going to probably pay us, you know, at least, you know, broken up 
throughout the year. You might do like four quarters. So um, usually my experience is organizations, pledges have some sort of structure to them. Um, and the pledger has to work within that structure. So this will kind of depend on your system. But in this case, let's say he's going to pay, you know, over the course of 12 months. Cool. All right. So next one, you know, when we save, it's going to give us an end date of 6-1-2015, and it's going to give us 12 installments. We're going to get to that more in a little bit. Next is if you're using Bluefin or um, one, of the, one of the older systems that, we, that some, con some of you may have still be using, like um, PayPal Pro and Authorize.net, um, if, if you're grandfathered in with that, um, you can actually make it an um, automated payment. So basically, we can create a, you know, this is where it gets hazy between recurring and pledges. Um, but I still like pledges better. Um, <laughs> but if, if they do decide to automate their pledge, this is what you'll use to do that. So you can go process payment automatically, and you can use the credit card on file or put one on file um, or just put in credit card information. If you aren't using Bluefin, I don't know if you're able to, you won't be able to store credit cards on file. Um, so this is primarily just a Bluefin option. So from there, we have contingency. So sometimes a pledge is contingent on something. I will give you $5,000 if you meet this criteria. So you're probably going to see this with big, with big pledgers. Um, it's totally up to you whether or not you even allow this. If you don't, ignore this part. Uh, if you allow contingency pledges, then and this pledge is a contingency pledge, then just go ahead and mark it as a contingency pledge. And then, you know, is it currently fulfilled? Is it not currently fulfilled? You know, when it is fulfilled later, you come back, you edit it, and you set it to yes. And what are the conditions? So this is really just a note. There's no logic here. But this is so you know what the conditions are. So he'll pay it, but only if you, you know, ha guarantee that someone else is going to be also pledging. So maybe it's some sort of weird kind of math. You know, whatever, whatever you're allowing is, is what you're typing here. So... Is it a contingency pledge? When is it, has it been fulfilled? Has it not been fulfilled? What will fulfill it? And then we can edit later and say when it is fulfilled and start entering payment. If this is still set to no, nothing prevents you from actually entering payment. Um, so that's contingency pledges. Um, if you have a pledge card, a physical pledge card um, from your event, for say, let's say, and you make a scan, a scan of it and you got a PDF or a Word document version of it or an image, you can attach that so that you can have that for your reference. So this is much like other document sections in uh, NPE, but this lets you attach a document specifically to a pledge profile. And the rest of this on the right is going to be very familiar from other donations. What, ple what program is, are these, is this pledge attached to? What campaign? What event? Is there a gift memo? Is it anonymous? Do we have soft credits? Are, we going to, are the pledge payments going to be soft credited? Are they being solicited by someone? Is there a tribute? So all this is exactly like you'd expect from a regular donation. And when we enter the payments, this is what will be applied to each pledge payment. So this is both for the pledge as a whole and for the individual payments. Now we'll talk more about, about actually editing this and, and pledge payments later. Um, but this is the details for the, for the pledge payments. And so at this point, We've got all the details. There wasn't much to it. We just, you know, amounts and dates, really. Um, you, as you can see, we don't need to put too much. And then we hit save. And now the system takes that information we gave. It's going to get, and we now have a start date. We've now got an end date calculated. How many installments, the total amount remaining, the total amount due, the total amount paid. We've got installment plans. And so we're going to talk about this in a second. Um, but did anybody have any questions about entering the details? Okay, so cool. Details, there wasn't, like I said, wasn't too much to it. Um, and now we have an installment plan. So this is where the real fun begins with pledges. Um, so if we had done a one year as our time frame, we'd only have one payment installment. And since we did 12 months, I get 12. The amount is evenly distributed against the entire 12 months with any remainder or, diff or, or put on the last one. So in this case, it was actually a, a negative four cent remainder. Um, so we, we just, that last one's a few cents smaller. So the system will, will try to as evenly as possible 
distribute the payments. So, um, where are my, my notes? So yeah, if you want to adjust the amounts or dates of a payment, you can do so. So we can use the scheduled date. We can change this date to maybe it's actually going to be he paid on the second. And you can change the amount that he paid, which is going to be important later. We're going to talk about what happens when you change amounts. Um, we can delete an installment completely if we wanted to. Um, and, you know, we can add installments. So basically, if you have pledges that basically extend previous pledges, so they, they pledged for one for two years the first year, and then halfway through that pledge, they pledged another two years, well, you can just add that right on. So you could say that, you know, there's another 12 months of pledges starting on the, at the end date of the current pledge for a total additional of, you know, maybe another 5,000. And so what this will do is it'll add another 12 installments. This can get sluggish because there's so many installments. Huzzah. So it just adds more installments. So, you know, we can change the dates of the payments. We can date, change the amounts of payments. We'll talk about actually receiving payments in a minute. We can remove payments and we can add additional payments. And every time we change an amount, add payments, remove payments, it will actually keep a history of the pledge's changes. So we added another $5,000 to this pledge. So now the total is 10,000, 5,000 plus 5,000. It has 24 installments. So it shows that as a upgrade in the history over on the right. So whenever you modify a pledge, either in, you know reducing its total, upgrading its total, you know, you know, upgrades or downgrades, we're gonna have a history of that. So this is a good way to keep an eye on, you know, what's been going on with a, with a pledge. Now, you could always have entered that pledge as a completely different pledge. It's totally up to you. Um, and that depends on your internal um, procedures. So if a pledge extends another pledge, you would use the add, you know, option I showed you. If it's a brand new pledge, handled differently, paid differently, then you would have created a new profile instead. So let's talk a little bit about upgrading and downgrading and balancing changes to pledges. So sometimes people don't pay the whole amount or they pay more than, than, the, than that should have been. So for example, maybe this first payment we know is gonna be smaller or bigger. So if I change this payment here, it's going to modify my total. So the system won't automatically do any redistribution. So let's say we know that on the first payment they only paid 400. So if that's true, if we want to maintain the total of the pledge, then we're going to have to add the amount that this was sub that didn't come in on this payment into another payment. Otherwise, it'll just count as a downgrade, or in reverse, it could count as an upgrade. So that's what I'm talking about in my outline about balancing changes. So if a payment differs from what the installment should be, you will have to make sure to take that into account in a different installment. Now, you might decide that you want to distribute that, or you might just tack it onto the end of it, to the payment at the end. That's totally up to you how you handle that. Um, I would probably just tack it onto the next payment um, with the assumption that they'll pay the difference on the next one, and then that way it, it just pushes down the line. Otherwise, you're going to have to adjust all of them all the time, and that's kind of a pain. Um, so in this case, we subtracted 1667. I am terrible with math. What is that? So 416.67 plus 1667 equals, so our payment is going to be 4334 for the next one. So 433.34. And then when I save, this should all balance out if I did that right. So does that make sense, everybody? How to how to balance your payments? Yep. So see, because I balanced them, there was no downgrade or upgrade for that change, and then now I can receive the payment. I'll we'll cover that in a second. So any, anyone got any other questions about um, modifying the installment plans before we talk about actually receiving the money um, or balancing installments? Okay, so like I said, it keeps a history and you also know which user. So if you notice that there's an imbalance, and we're gonna talk a little bit about 
about that when we get to the end of reporting and you notice that your totals are not adding the way they ought to, um, you can take go back into a pledge and you know say, well, why is this small? Why was this pledge downgraded? And you can see who downgraded it or upgraded it, and you know then you can ask them that 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 staff member or user, um, you know, what was your intention here? Was it supposed to be a downgrade? You know, or was it a you know you forgot they forgot to balance it? So and balancing is going to be important, or it could throw off your reporting. And so while you might think that you're supposed to have you know sixty thousand dollars of pledges within a time period, you're finding that you only have like half of that. And it's because people have been paying smaller amounts and maybe they mean to make it up later, but that's not been accounted for in the balancing. So, okay, well, let's talk about actually receiving the money. And this is where things get fun. So we have two ways of receiving money. Um, one way is receive money. And we're gonna talk about more about the different screens we can receive money on too in a second. So we could say, okay, they've paid this amount, receive money. And it's going to open up, a, you know, a simplified ad edit donation screen, much like you'd get with normal donations, except for um, your program and stuff has mostly been filled out for you, although you can modify it. So individual payments might go to different programs, but it's going to fill in the payment schedule date. So that's the date it was scheduled. This was the date it was received. So this is the donation date. This is what they're paying. This is um, the tax deductible, gift memo, how they're paying, check, check number, date that you process the check. So we actually have three dates here, which can be a little bit confusing. Um, but payment schedule is when they should have paid. Receive date is the date they did pay, so their donation date for purposes of um, donation acknowledgement. And date of payment is your date for when you process the payment. So this is, should match your bank. This is what goes to them. This is kind of ignorable, honestly, but it's when they should have paid. Um, and then, you know, soft credit and all that. So when, uh, those fields, you know, we've already kind of talked about. And then save. So at this point, a payment has been received. It's going to be, we can acknowledge it now like money, like any other donation, I'm gonna say later. Um, close. I need to get that to auto close. Um, so now here we have under schedules, we have our first payment. We can edit that payment like any other donation. Um, we can also edit it from the donation screen. So we'll talk about that. We now have an amount paid and the amount remaining has changed. And this does not affect to the history since we haven't taught, we haven't done anything to the actual total. So that's one way we can receive payment. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and close out of this profile and show you some of the other ways. Because we're actually gonna come back and talk about a signed gift, but first we need to have a gift. So the other way we can receive a payment. And by the way, here's our pledge under financials and here's the pledge payment as a singular donation under donation details. Pledge payments and pledges don't have names. They're just auto-generated with the details. Um, so let's talk about the other ways to receive money. Okay, so one way is we can go to edit for pledge details and use receive money. And this is gonna be almost the exact, I think this is the exact same screen we just talked about with entering a pledge payment. So this is directly entering the payment into the pledge. So it's same screen, just different way to get to it. Or we could have done edit and you know edited the individual installments. So if I do receive money, To click on it. It'll take a second. And I guess, and same screen, and we just choose which installment we're paying. So I'm going to cancel that. The other way, so that's when, you know, you get your payment, you know it goes to the pledge, and you enter it directly to the pledge, everything's nice and tidy. Things aren't always tidy though. Maybe the person made a pledge, and then they went to your website, and made a donation and then called you and say, oh yeah, I paid my pledge online. And now you're like, well, curses, what do I do? The pledge payment is a regular donation. So for that, we can assign a donation to be a pledge payment. So let's go ahead and add a donation under giving details really quickly. And you know, say this is you know replicating their online donation. Uh, Whatever, I'll just pick one at random. This should be applicable. Oh, sorry. Like I said, demo database, not a good example of a clean database. 
let's use that one. So hopefully it's set up rightly. Okay, perfect. Um, so that was 416.16, is that right? No, 67, that sounds right. Where's my calculator? Well, I'll just assume that's right. Um, and then you know, check out and process like any other donation. So for those of you who haven't done, done any webinars or tutorials on donations, that was a quick overview of adding a donation. Um, acknowledge later. Okay. So, okay. Our person's made a donation online or another staff member accidentally entered it as a regular donation. So now what we can do is go to pledge details, edit, edit. And now we're going to use the assign gift option. So I was totally wrong. The next payment was supposed to be for this amount. Well, let's say that they paid this month. Doesn't matter which one, honestly. Um, so assign gift, because I want my totals to match. And it gives you a list of donations from their donation details. If something's already been assigned, it won't show up. So, you know, so if it's been assigned to any pledge, it won't show up. So we select the donation, submit, and so now we're going to see for this donation, 8-1-2014, it has been entered. So as you see, we have two ways. So even if someone makes a donation online, you can still assign it to a pledge. Or if you've got a check and you want to assign, you want to enter the check directly against a pledge, that is also an option. So now we've, since the amounts matched, we don't have any discrepancies in our history. I'm going to go ahead and save. close up and so now if I go to donation details where this one said donation towards staff support it's now going to be a pledge a pledge payment so any questions about paying pledges or receiving pledge payments or assigning them oh, oh so this is so in this situation um, so the question is, so the automatic payment for that one month will not be taken. It actually, hmm, you actually wouldn't have recur any automated payments in this case. If it was automated, you wouldn't be able to assign uh, donations to it because it's automated. Um, so you won't actually have to deal with that discrepancy issue. Um, so if someone does automate their, if you're, if you automate a donation, then you don't need to worry about conflicts between what you enter for that pledge and um, what the the automatic payments for that pledge will do because you won't actually be able to do both simultaneously. You can either automate it or ma keep it manual. You can't do both because um, you're right. You'd have a conflict. So our way of avoiding that is just not allowing you to create a conflict. Um, so the, yeah, so the example I just did is, is an example of a manually entered um, and manually maintained donation. If it had been automated, the moment you hit save and you know put in your credit card stuff at the very beginning, there was nothing further you would have had to do. So um, for automated donations, you don't need to assign gifts. You don't need to receive amounts. Um, and I don't believe you can edit the, the installments. Um. That's a good question. I have to admit, uh, so the question is, what if an automated payment did not come through due to a bounced card and they sent a check to make up for it? Um, I have to admit, I, I don't know about that particular case. Um, I believe, I believe I would totally just be making it up if I gave you an answer. So I'm going to say I don't know. And I will have to get back on that one. Um, when I post the the webinar video, <laughs> um, I will have a note f um, in there about this particular question. Um, so hopefully I, when I put the webinar video up on Friday, I'll have an answer for that one. Um, I will honestly have to put that before the team. So it might get me a little, might take me a little time because I won't be able to test for that case um, myself. So uh, pledge. 
bounce payment. So yeah, as soon as I can, I will, um, I will, um, I'll get an answer for you with when I put up the webinar video. Um, so do these donors mail in a check each month or how do we keep track of who will? Okay, cool. That's actually a good question. Um, so what we can do, and I totally forgot about this in my outline, is we can look at outstanding pledges. So we can go to donation management, outstanding pledges. Outstanding pledges. I went ahead and added that to my notes. So here we can see all pledges that are overdue. Um, these pledges that are overdue. So this might actually be the answer to your question. I'll have to double check with the team, but I think this might actually be the answer to your question. I think you come here and you can enter the check. Um, but I want to confirm that before I promise any, any kind of clarity on that one. Um, I just haven't had to do that yet. But for overdue, if you want, if someone is sending their checks each month, then you can go to donation management, outstanding pledges, and um, you will be able to see what's due for a certain time frame, what's overdue, and so on and so forth. And then you'll actually be able to enter the payments right here. So this will also be a quick way to enter a lot of payments at once. So if you've got a lot of pledge, pledge payments for a time period, um, anywhere from just a day to probably like a month or two, I wouldn't probably go too far out. Depends on how many pledges you get in. Um, you want to overload the page and your internet connection. Um, this is how you can handle multiple pledge payments at once. And I'm so glad you asked that because I almost totally forgot about this. So, um, yeah. So any other questions about... Um, receiving payment or entering payment for a pledge? Anything else? Other than that? Okay, so let's talk really briefly about editing pledges. And it's not too difficult. So once again, we're gonna go to the, um, the pledge details and we're just gonna click on edit. So you actually already saw most of the editing. Um, so it's really, I just want to mention a few um, details about editing a pledge. So the first thing is you can edit a pledge. So that's good news. Um, in the past, I think it may not have been possible. Um, am I have the right contact? I don't. Oh, I've got too many. It was Adam B. Ross. That's it. Um, so first off about editing is you can also delete, because I guess that's a poor form of editing. Um, so you can delete a profile that you haven't made use of yet. So if you enter in a profile, oh, which one is it? Let's try this one. If you enter a profile for a contact and then you realize, oh, I made a mistake, then you can delete the profile and re-enter it. So you can kind of read, you can kind of hit the redo button there. Um, still not the right contact. I need to start merging some of these Adam B. Rosses. Um, so that's one option. If you've already entered payment, then you won't be able to delete it. Um, so you'd have to you know, void out things like you normally would. Um, I think though, if you void the, pay the payments, then you can delete it. I think that's right, yeah, that is correct. Um, if I don't get the right one on this go, well, I'll just give up. Um, but editing, you just go to um, pledge details, click on the edit button, you get the screen that shows you Huzzah, got it right that time. Um, so go to edit, giving de uh, pledge details, get the edit screen, click on edit, and then we can change the details about the pledge. So we've talked about how you can change installments. You can also change, change which program, campaign, event, so on and so forth, that the payments should be, you know, can, should be have recorded against them. Just note that this will only affect the pledge profile and up any further payments that you make against the profile. So any payments you put in the past will not be retroactively changed. So this is both good and bad. It means you can make a change halfway through and you aren't gonna overwrite your previous payments, but it also means that if you make a change halfway through, you're not gonna overwrite your previous changes. So it depends kind of on, on what you wanted. But you can still go into the individual payments and you can edit them. 
normally I would do it from the donation details, but you can also do it from within the pledge. So if I want to go back and change a particular payment to be a different program or event or something like that, then I could do so. It's just important to know that changes to the pledge itself, the pledge profile, will not retroactively change the past payments. So that's editing and deleting pledges. Um, any questions about pledges at all before we move on to grants, which are ridiculously similar to pledges? Um, okay, so grants are really similar sorry, to pledges. Sorry, I do have one Oh, yeah, question. absolutely. Uh, what do you, is there a, a process for if, if someone simply does not pay a pledge, is there a process accounting-wise to write it off? Um, not built within NP, NPE, you can just delete the pledge if they don't pay it. Um, as for accounting, I have to admit I don't know how the, the legalities and tax stuff on accounting uh, for pledges. Okay. Um, so if that's from an NPE perspective, um, you can always just downgrade the, the pledge if it was been partially paid to, so that it's just you just downgrade it to what they have paid if they haven't paid any of it then that's kind of your your choice if you want to just delete it or if you sure. want to um, handle it some other way maybe downgrade I don't know what would happen if you downgraded it to zero um, but it would show up in various places that you did downgrade it from an actual accounting perspective I'm not sure right um, okay yeah sorry couldn't clear that Thanks. one up a bit more um, so a couple of the questions we have here are, oop, I went too far. Um, can a pledge be for something specific? Um, yes, through the use of programs. So programs are meant in MPE to designate basically restricted funds. So if, if, if people in general are allowed to donate to a specific program, i.e. specific part of your operations, something you do, a scholarship fund, things like that, then those are programs, and so you would then specify that as the program for the donate for the for the profile in general, or for individual donations uh, payments. So um, program is how you would specify if the pledge is from something specific. Um, and so that leads into your next question: If all the pledges are general, but one was for something special, can that be done? Yes. So while you could make a profile for a pledge you know, non-program specific. Um, as, you, as, as, we, as we saw on the, um, the edit and entry screen for a pledge payment, you can individually set the program. So um, yeah, no problem. Okay, so let's talk about grants. Um, grants, I know there's a difference financially. I'm not 100% clear on what it is, but I th grants are usually something you apply for. Um, this is where I get a little hazy. Usually I actually know how these things work. Um, you know, a pledge is a promise. A pledge is saying, I'm going to pay you. It's usually from individuals. Well, a grant is something you've generally applied for. You've submitted a request. Um, maybe it's coming from a government organization. Maybe it's coming from a, um, you know, an endowment fund or, or foundation. Um, so, you know, in a lot of ways, they're pretty similar to pledges. You know, you've applied for it. You don't know if you're going to get it, so there's a little, that little bit of uncertainty. But it is, as I understand, financially different from a pledge. So it's a, it's not really a promise. It's it's your attempt to get someone to promise you money. So for grants, and we go instead of to pledge details, we go to grant details, and it's going to be very similar. We go ahead and we click the add button. And once again, we have amount, start date, time frames, other information like programs, campaigns, events, solicited by. We don't have soft credit, and we do not have tributes because grants are a more formal form of giving. Um, but what we do have is some custom fields. So by default, you're going to have report composition, submission mode, and ignore school name. And I think status comes with it. I don't know if the system's been edited a bit, um, but you you get custom fields, which you can modify, and we're going to cover that in a second. So when you submit a grant, 
you know, your, sub, your report composition, submission mode, and one other field, which I can't remember right now, comes with the system built into the grant. But if you want to track additional information about your grants, maybe like staff member who did submission, or, um, you know, whatever other fields you might, other information you might want to track per grant, you can create using custom data sets, and we're going to show that briefly. Um, so that's one of the other main differences. So we don't have, we, excuse me, we don't have tribute, we don't have soft credit, and we do have custom data fields. The other difference, let's actually go ahead and create a grant for $4,000, uh, starting on the second for, let's do one year, save. The other difference is grantors have a contact type. So when you're, when you save this, did I hit the save button? Or did I miss it? I miss it sometimes. Oh, helps. Custom required fields and all that. Um, so um, when I save this, it actually adds the contact type grantor to the contact. And this is mostly because of the custom data set, but it's one, di one way you can look for your grants. You could always look for people who have the grantor contact type. Pledges don't have a contact type. They're just considered, um, once the payment's received, to be part of the donor contact type. Um, another thing that you get with grants is interaction task. So you can record activity, uh, interactions and task, tasks specifically against a, um, a grant. And I totally forgot that in my notes, so give me one second. about that. So interactions and tasks, so you can keep track of, you know, when you may have called about it, when you may have emailed or, or, or sent physical mail about it. Maybe you had a meeting. So you can keep track of the history of that grant in here. And then if you have a status option, you can say, you know, when things are done, where the grant is. And this lets you keep a history of the grants you've submitted and the grants that have actually been paid. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And just like pledges and pledges, you can edit grants and receive money in the same way. So here we have it. And you can receive money, you can delete it, and you can edit it in much the same way. So grants in a nutshell, not too not too different from pledges. The only difference is we're going to have a cons we have a custom data set in an interaction and task. Um, so let's talk about actually creating that custom data set, and then I'll field some more questions. So Adam. Ross is a grantor now. Okay, so if we go to configuration, custom data sets, irregardless if you've, if you've used custom data sets before, so I guess you're going to get a little bit of a crash course in this. And, and yes, Katya. So the question is, can you do multiple payments for a grant? Yes. So whatever, you, so just like pledges, whatever you do for your time frame will determine multiple payments. So, um, and then you can add new installments and stuff like that. So you can edit them just like you do a pledge. So you can say, okay, I know what this is going to get paid in one lump sum. I know it's going to be paid in installments. You can say that in the time frame. If they decide to add an additional payment or spread it out into you know different payments, then you can edit the payment schedule and the amounts just like you did with a pledge. Yeah. So con the grant custom data set. Notice that we can't actually edit it. So we go ahead and we're going to click on that one. It's going to take a second to change. All right, I click on it. Do -do. What's going on here? My computer being sluggish again. That's always mildly embarrassing. <laughs> is never happy when I have over 11 people on on a screen share. Okay. Well, um, my computer seems to be being a pain in the butt. So basically, you click on custom, the grant custom data set, and you'll get your fields. So you don't need to do anything with contact type. You'll see the fields. If you want to create a new field, just click the Add button. If you want to edit a pre-existing field, click the Edit button. Like I said, it comes with a handful of fields. You aren't bound to those. So you can add as many additional fields as you want. You can change the names on fields. Um, 
and basically everything you put in the, the, the under fields will show up in that grant screen. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my computer today, but um, so is there any questions about grants <clears throat> before we move on to matching donations? Matching donations gets a little trickier. Um, so without going too much into custom data set, the details, custom data sets only, traditionally only allow you to add fields to a contact record screen. So um, you could add additional information to a contact type or to the, to the, that first page when you edit a contact, um, basically for additional fields on a contact record. Grant is the only case where you can actually edit a screen beyond the add edit screen of a contact. Normally, um, you can only add it to the add edit screen for contact uh, details um, or to one of the individual tabs like donor or grantor. Normally, it attaches to a contact type. Um, grant is the only case would actually will add to a input screen, such as when you enter donations or membership or grants. Um, we are going in that direction, but um, other than that, that's the only case where you can um, edit a, a screen with custom data sets. Um, and custom data sets are basically, the purpose of them is to extend the system. So we, we have made a lot of fields. Um, some of them are very basic, like first names and last names, things like that. Some of them are things like demographics. Um, but sometimes, you know, we didn't think of everything. So custom data sets allows you to extend. So if you want to track religion, which I, you know, there's a handful of organizations that track religion, you can do that with a custom data set. Additional volunteer information, um, additional membership information. So aside from the fact they have these memberships, maybe you want to track, um, like we here at Nonprofit Easy, use it to keep track of your, um, your URL for your database. Um, to make life a little easier for us support folk, and what services you provide to your to your your audience or I don't know, community or what have you. Um, if you cancel, we track the cancellation date. Uh, kind of random things like that. Um, so that's kind of things you can do with data sets. If you're interested in data sets, check out my tutorials on them. Um, they're only written; they're not video. Um, or um, sign up for the custom data set webinar. I recommend everybody who has not done that already, hasn't seen custom data sets or played with them, sign up for that webinar. They are awesome. Um, but I don't want to get too deep on them right now because I want to focus on pledges, pre, uh, pledges and grants and, don and um, um, matching donations today. So um, is there any other grant specific questions that, that doesn't delve into custom data sets? Sorry, I don't mean to put it off like that, but I want to keep us on, tra on track. OK, so let's talk about matching donations. So matching donations can be really cool. Um, basically, a matching donation is when a person or a company, usually companies, say um, something like, well, these people, if you can get donations from them, I will pay you $1 for every $1 up to you know some amount or I'll pay you $1 for every 50 bucks you get from them, or, or something like that. Basically, they're matching. Now, like I said, the most common case is a corporate match. Um, so that's the example I'm going to do here. But you can have also individuals match other individuals. Um, so what we're going to do here is going to have a company who's matching its employees is going to be our example. Um, but it can extend to other folk. And so the importance of this, uh, of doing the important first step, is to create the matching profile first. So if you enter a donation and then create the profile, that profile will not grab that donation. So order of operations is very important here. So your first step will be to create the matching profile in the record of whomever will be doing the matching, so the company in this case. So we're going to go to organizations and we're going to grab ourselves a company. One hope I'm going to pick one that I haven't used before for this. Um, we thought these names got funky. Funky. You should see the organization names. Ah, actually, they're not. We cleaned them up, I guess. So let's go. A touch of home shall be our guinea pig today. So well, a touch of home has said for. Um, Sometimes look right with this record. Oh. 
Okay, bad example, but okay, we'll go with it. So a touch of home has said for all their employees, we're going to match their donations. So we go into touch of homes record, it's our organization. We come down to matching donation details and we click the add button. So and I'll, I'll point out where things would be different from an individual. Well, actually, here's the first case. Um, the eligibility. So if this was an individual, it would always be all donations. But since this is a company, you can match against employee donations only. So you get to choose if this is for any donation, and we'll, we'll be able to refine it in a moment, or only employee donations. So let's say only employee donations. The next is what are we matching? Well, what, what, criteria, what are we matching against? So is it only donations entered into a certain donation name? Or maybe donations only entered under a certain campaign? What I'm a big fan of doing is going, um, and this is what usually seems to be the case when I'm helping folk, is do employees only, since usually it's a company matching their employees, and then matching against a campaign and create a campaign called corporate giving or corporate matching, something like that. <clears throat> if um, if it's an individual matching, you might ooh, really being close. You might have to use a donation name. It's up to you how you want to organize it. I prefer using a campaign called corporate matching, but if you want to have a donation name that, called corporate matching, you can do that too. And that requires that any donation that will be matched by an employee's employer must be in that attached to that campaign or that donation name. Now, since people tend to donate to specific programs and you probably don't want to make a million donation names, that's why I like using campaign because a, a donation can have multiple campaigns. So someone's donation might come in from your, your annual appeal and go to a specific program, but you can additionally mark it as also, since we know this is going to be matched as a, um, a corporate matching campaign as well as the, the annual appeal. Um, so I hope I hope that makes sense. It gets a little confusing, um, I think sometimes, but hopefully I explain that okay. So contact eligibility, is it all contacts or is it only the employees of the company? What are we matching against? Are we matching against a certain donation name? So the employees have to donate into a certain donation name or the donation has to be recorded against a certain campaign. I recommend campaign called corporate matching. So let's, I don't think I have one already set up. Let's call it capital, let's use a capital campaign. And then what is the time frame that they'll do this matching? So in this case, they're gonna match maybe for a year between June and June uh, for a year. Oops, bad example of, a, I'll use a different program. Um, you can also match against programs. So you could say that any employee who gives to a certain program will be matched. Um, same kind of idea. Um, okay, so start date, end date, that's a time frame that they're matching within. So if a donation is made before this or after this, um, then it doesn't count. So if don't someone donate, if you create this profile for like a future date and the person just donated and the start date hasn't come up, they won't be, it won't be matched. Um, next is for every, how much? For every dollar, for every $5, for every $10, the company will match $1. So maybe it's a dollar for dollar match, or maybe it's for every $5, they'll match $2. You know, they'll have told you up to how much. So they probably have some cap, you know, some limit on their giving that they were allowed, their accounting says they can do. So here's where you put that limit so that we know not to bug them if that limit is passed. And then description is for notes, and then we save. So any questions about configura configurating, configurating, configuring the, um, the matching profile? I figure if there's gonna be a lot of questions, it's probably gonna be here. <laughs> no, okay. Um, well then, if, okay, so, Let's move on. So let's go ahead and save this profile. So cool, we've created a matching profile. So now, and we attach it to annual fund. Okay, and not to donation name. And for every, and this, and we're gonna come back to this. So let's go ahead and go to Lisa's record. 
So at the moment, no one has made any donations that should be matched. So let's go to this Lisa Fo person's record and make a donation to the, was it annual fund? Oh, annual fund. So let's, let's, so Lisa's making a donation and we know it's gonna be matched by her company. So we come to giving details, we're gonna enter a donation as normal and we're just gonna attach it to a program. So let's do this real quick. Okay, it's the annual fund. The rest of this doesn't matter. Uh, date range is good. Check out and process. And check for C's. Later, close. Okay, so now Lisa has made a donation and she says, oh, and my company's gonna match that. And we know the company's gonna match it because we created a profile. So let's go back to the company and so a little time goes on, and now we're like, well, well how, let's see. How much does Touch of Home owe, owe, owe us? How much should they be giving us? How much should we expect from them? So maybe um, we're being responsible to go and, 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 and bug uh, a Touch of Home for the donations, or maybe they're sending it automatically. Either way, we want to know. So now, if we come down to the matching details, we say that, oh, look, matching amount due. This is how much they owe us. This is how much they have paid. This is how much is still pending to be paid. So this is their total matching. So this is like, you know, if they've paid, if they've overall owed us a hundred dollars, you know, this will be a hundred. If they've paid us fifty of that, then the paid would be fifty, and the matching pending would be fifty. So let's say, okay, we've got the payment from a touch of home now. So let's go to edit. So a touch of home has given us you know, the $25 payment, cool. So here we have a couple of fields. Now, as I mentioned, matching amount due is the total. Whether it's been paid or not paid, this is how much total we should receive when all is said and done. This is how much we have received, and you can click on it and see the payments. And this is how much they currently owe us. So your goal is to keep this at zero, I guess you could say. And what's the current matching status? open. If they decide, okay, we're, gonna, we're ending our, pro, our matching program, you can click on open and that'll close it out. Uh, there's a question. I missed it. Um, um, it will, so what it's going to calculate is all employees who make a donation to the annual fund. So that's how you can select only specific employees. So it'll look at all employees' donations, but only those donations that are matched against a certain donation name, program, or campaign. Thus, you want thus making the campaign of corporate matching make sense. So only those donors who are part of the corporate matching program would have their donations logged under the corporate matching campaign and thus being caught by the donation the matching profile. So while you can't specify only certain pro only certain employees. When you enter a donation to those certain employees, you'll specify that a donation is applicable by attaching it to the proper program campaign or donation name. Yeah. So we're more interested not so much in the, do the employees who are donating, but in their donations themselves. So we're not matching against employees. We're matching against the details of the donation. So that might help kind of guide you. So, okay, cool. So a touch of home. We, we sent them a letter saying, you owe us 25 bucks for the month. And they said, okay, here's 25 bucks. Cool. So this is where we aren't, don't quite have as much flexibility as a pledge. We can't assign something that's already been paid, but we can enter the payments as they come in. So Touch of Home sends us a check. We do it through all, we go to edit, we go to edit, and we, we come onto this page and we hit donate and we enter the details. So what are they paying us? So once it comes up, We'll just enter the details. Um, we can close the matching now if we want to, or we could have clicked on that open button, that would have closed it. Um, we can say, okay, um, this matching is coming under the same donation name. It was donated on the 5th. Hold on, I can't use that, I always forget. Um, okay, 
put it under general donations. That's much better. And the amount is 25. So they may not actually have paid you the full amount. Maybe they only paid you part of it. So you ooh, let's not go over then, shall we? So you can you put that amount in here and you know the tax deductibility and memo and how they paid and you know so on and so forth. What if a company sends a single check with payroll deductions from multiple employees and the match for each employee? Yes. So if you know who the employees were. Oh, that just gets awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> um, that's a really weird one. So if the comp so the question is, what, how, what do you do if the company sends you a single check saying here's what we took from our employees and here's what we're paying so you got one check that's covering multiple people's donations as well as the company's match mm, that is all sorts of messy so we can't use split don't we can't use split transaction for that one since it's too too many people involved um split transaction only works if one person gives you one check only for themselves, but for multiple things. So what we do is create the matching profile for the company, like we did before. Then you will enter the donations for the individuals individually. And um, so there's a certain level of inaccuracy in this, but it's the only way we can do it. Um, then enter the individual donate, you know, donations individually, and just put their portion of the check, and then put the the actual check number um, and then enter the the matching portion is a single payment against the matching profile and enter the check information so what's really going on is we're actually though they gave us one check we're treating that check like multiple checks um, though we only have one check number for all the different transactions um, so I, I know it's not pretty but unfortunately there's no way for us to have like one person pay for multiple people um the system just we just didn't design that at the early early on and and, and it just isn't a technical possibility so for that situation so yeah so that's how you'll do it for one check covering multiple people you will treat it as if you got multiple checks so one for each of the individuals and then one for the entire matching so you'll make your profile you'll Enter the individual donations for the people, and then what, now that you've got a total that the matching will be, you can pay off the matching. Um, yes. So the question is, can we do one match received for multiple employees? That the answer is yes. So while the individual employees' donations will all have to be individual, the collective sum that is being matched by the employer which is shown in the um, uh, the, the amount pending field. So that's what amount pending is. The collective sum that they owe can be done in one payment. So if you're lucky, it's all one for one. You get one donation check from the employee, you get one donation check from the company. But if you get different checks from different people and the company gives you one check, you're still good because you, the, while the individuals have to be handled individually as individual donations, the collective amount owed by the company can be one payment. Yes, hope that made sense. Um, uh, what about soft credit slash solicited by credit for each employee on the employer page? So you can, so while the end so if an employee wants to do a soft credit solicited by, that's totally cool but you cannot do soft credit for the employer's payment um, because like you like you like you pointed out you're generally going to be paying lump sums um, now sometimes they send them individual checks to match individual employees but usually it's a lump sum from my experience with other orgs um, so you will not be able to have the employer soft credit the employee um, so that's unfortunately not possible good questions um, any other questions about 
entering the payment. I'm actually going to go ahead and save it so you can see. Ooh, what? Oh, apparently today. What is today? The third. Save. So, here we have it now. Total amount due. We've paid 25. The company currently owes us nothing. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, I caught you. I knew. I I figured you'd have a lot of. I know you guys use it pretty heavily. Um, so had you in mind with this one. Um, okay, so that's matching donations. Um, ma for matching do donate donate. Yeah, so that's all. Ma so yeah, that's the entirety of matching donation. Um, you create your profile. You set how it, how the profile is going to operate. What it's going to look for. You enter your donations into the individuals, then you can receive the payment that's due from the company. So, any other questions on matching? Yeah, Eric. Mm -hmm. It's Kim. Howdy. Uh, hi. Um, can you do a donation? I have a, I have one donor that is an ex-employee of the company, but they they do matching on the retirement or the you know the ex-employee participation. And they usually send me a check once a year, as opposed to, you know, multiple checks mm -hmm, like we were mm -hmm. just talking about. Mm -hmm. So I give the, I give the, generally at each month that my donor gives me uh, her donation, I go ahead and send her a donation letter. But then, like at the end of the year or first of the next year, I'll get a check from the company matching what she was given. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. How would you handle that? Would that still be considered a matching donation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that would be handled just the same way. You just do one big lump sum payment from the organization under donate, but you'd enter okay. all the individual payments from the employee or ex-employee in this case as right. uh, individual donations that would get caught by the matching. Okay. And then the other question I had was we we can we give the company a tax tax letter as well, correct? They would mm, still get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would still get one. Okay. Yeah. I mean okay. that you, you that's that's, I, that's your that's your particular policies, but I think that the standard I've seen is yeah, since it is a don a regular donation for all intents and purposes, unless there's right. some legality or or procedural reason not to, I you would give them a donation acknowledgement for the payment, and it would this would show up yeah. under um, donation acknowledge the payment would show up under donation acknowledgement for the company. Okay, okay, that's yeah. what I thought. I just wanted. To I yeah. just wanted to make yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. If I can help with procedural stuff, I do what I can. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. So that's matching. Um, so let's talk a little bit about reporting. So we're going to wrap up with reporting in a really tiny little tidbit on donation acknowledgement. So if you haven't done donation acknowledgement, don't fret. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to go into donation acknowledgement or the details of reporting, but I want to point out a couple of the details. Uh, well, okay, details. Um, some of the useful details for where what we covered today is going to touch on reporting and donation acknowledgement. Um, if you want more on reporting, I've got uh, I think a webinar later this month also on reporting, or maybe I did maybe that's next month. Um, but I also have that webinar on on in the tutorials um, and donation acknowledgement. I also have a fair amount of tutorials on that, and I believe a webinar later this month on donation acknowledgement. So for the details on those two processes, I have other sources, but I'll tell you where they tie in with what we did today. So, reports. So, let's talk um, custom reports specifically. So, there's a couple of criteria that are be useful when we are talking about when we're working with pledges, grants, and matching donations. So, let's go ahead and edit one of my custom data, my custom reports. And I'll point out the useful um, donate um, criteria. So when it comes to the payments for these things, for the payments for pledges, for the payments for um, grants or matching, you'll use your donation criteria as you always did, because they have, you know, donation name is not as useful here, but things like program, date, uh, campaign, things like that are still going to be useful. Um, but another particular one is donation type. So when you, and this is specifically for pledge and grants, donation type is pledge grant. And so that is for 
knowing if this is a pledge or grant payment. So you could get a list of all your pledge grant payments from here. For matching, they're just donations for all for most intents and purposes. So you'll treat them like your donations, but we'll hold on that a little bit. Um, so donation types probably the most useful. Um, and I feel like there was one more. Uh, this is more for recurring donations, but I want to mention it here is recurring donation. It's a cool criteria. I think it's actually new. Um, we'll let you know if a donation is, is a recurring donation or if it's a standalone. So um, that doesn't really affect our, tra our webinar today, but I wanted to point it out for in reference. Um, otherwise, we do have sections that will look at the grant profile, the matching profile, and the, 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 the pledge profile. So donations has the criteria for the individual payments, but grant info, pledge info, and was it matching donations, specifically look at the profiles. So if you want us to look at your open profiles, you want to look at your profiles in certain date ranges, things like that, you'll use these criteria. Um, so uh, yeah, those are the criteria of, of particular you, of interest. Now to go with those criteria, we have particular views. So let's go to next, let's go to next step. So if we want to look at the actual payments, like with most donations, we're going to use the donation transaction report. So if we're doing donation type is pledge grant, and we want to look at all the pledge grant payments, we would look at, we would use the donation transaction report view. That's going to give us an itemized list of all the donations and then handle that as you normally would for donation reports, pick your columns, all that. So that would be donation transaction report view to look at the individual um, payments. But if you want to look at the profiles, you would use, really, I think that's sluggish, it is. Um, let me wait for it to pull up a bit. They're redoing the internet here, so I'm hoping it'll help. Um, hello, okay. So if you wanna look at pledge profiles, you use the pledge report. If you wanna look at grant profiles, you look at the grant report. If you wanna look at matching profiles, look at the matching report. Since I mentioned re recurring, you could also look at recurring profiles, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, so donation transaction report for the individual payments to look at the profiles, pledge, grant, matching report. Okay, so any quick questions about, about those criteria or the views? Um, I'd actually suggest just play with them. They're kind of fun. You can do some cool stuff with them. Um, I don't see too many reports run like that, but if you want us to take a look at your profiles, then those criteria will be handy. Okay, so that's a little bit of report. And just really quickly, let's talk about um, donation acknowledgement temp 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 yeah, template placeholders that will come into play for pledges, grants, pledges and grants. Um, so when it comes to matching donations, those are treated for purposes of donation acknowledgement like any other donation. They are use the same, um, what's it called, the same placeholders and everything. So you don't have to do anything fancy for those. For a, um, use my placeholder test. For pledges and grants, once you'll actually use, once again, basically the same placeholders, donation amount, um, donation date, so on and so forth. And those will tell you about the specifics of the payment. So a payment is not much different than a regular donation. Um, same placeholders and everything. But if you want to tell the person about the profile, we have some, criteria, uh, some placeholders. So for the actual donation itself, you'll use donation amount and date and name, description, all that. But if you want to tell people like the current status, of their installments and all that. Then we have pledge and grant sections. So pledge amount will tell you the total. Uh, start date, end date, installments will actually give them their installment plan. Thank you for paying your for paying this installment and your pledge of blah de blah. Um, you know your pledge started on this date and is scheduled to end on this date. Below you will find your your schedule of payments. Please make sure to pay on time to help maintain. You know something like that. So you'd use pledge installments, which will give you a table. Um, you've paid this much, you have this much remaining. Same with grants. 
So if the foundation gives you installments and you want to send them a letter as you go, then you can use these placeholders. Um, so other than that, you're going to use placeholders like normal. The only other thing I think I might also mention that aside from placeholders, uh, pledge grant payments when you're picking your vault, your don when you're looking at your list of donations to acknowledge, will be in their own list. So gift, but specifically pledges and grants will be in their own list. So you know which template to use because, like you just noticed, your pledge, if you're going to be using specific pledge grant um, placeholders, will be in their own. Will will use their own template. Will grant will use its own. So this will let you know we'll be able to keep them separated. Um, so that's a quick connection to donation acknowledgement.